However much you seem to be living in a material world in a solid reality, you're actually living in a world of imagination, a simulation, a virtual reality. And everything that you've created up until this moment in your life, whether that was good, bad, or indifferent, all of the issues that are in your life, you have created from the inner world, the subjective world within you. And these issues in your life, whether they're good or bad, have been created from emotional states. Whenever you become emotionally charged about anything in your world and you're reacting to those things, you're actually creating more of those same things to happen in your world. And in this video, we're going to dig deeper into this from Neville Goddard's Power of Awareness, Chapter 13, Acceptance. However much you seem to be living in a material world, you are actually living in a world of imagination. You are living in a simulation. In other words, that's what Neville Goddard is saying right here. The outer physical events of life are the fruit of forgotten blossom time. So everything you've experienced, every issue in your life, you created from the inner world in your imagination yesterday, the things that you were experiencing today. You imagined them a week ago, a month ago. You became emotionally charged about something that recreated something else to happen in your world. And these things are results of previous and usually forgotten states of consciousness. So when you have imagined these things, it was unconscious. You weren't aware of what was going on in the subjective world, in your, your inner dialogue, your inner talking, the pictures being created in your mind, the things that you're reacting to in your three-dimensional world. You were unconscious of a lot of these things. And you, that's why a lot of people don't know that they're actually creating their own reality. Because if you were conscious of the pictures in your mind, of your inner dialogue, the inner conversations, you would understand exactly why your life is the way that it is right now. And just like Neville Goddard states right here, they are the ends running true to oftentimes forgotten imaginative origins. So whenever you become completely absorbed in an emotional state or reacting to something in your three-dimensional world, you are at that moment assuming the feeling of your state fulfilled. You are saying, I want more of this. You are planting seeds for those same things or similar things to happen again in your world. So, and if you persist in those feelings whatsoever, you are intensely emotional about, you will experience in your world again. So remember that throughout the day when you're manifesting, if you have something on the way, something that you're working on to manifest, to come into your world and something negative happens in your world, something that contradicts it, do not become emotional about that. Stay detached from what you're manifesting and you will not become emotional about anything that contradicts it. And that's really the key to manifestation. If you're not emotional and attached to what you're manifesting, like using the not technique, indifferent to whether it's coming, then nothing's going to sway you from knowing that it's coming. You're visualizing it coming. You're affirming that it's coming and you're detached from the outcome of it. You're not emotional about it. You're not attached to when it's going to come. You're completely detached from your manifestation. So when something comes and tries to contradict it, it doesn't, it doesn't sway you. You do not react to it. So you do not become emotionally charged about that. So you're not recreating the contradictions to keep coming back into your life. And in contrast, when something positive comes into your world, something that you like, something that you want more of in your life, become emotional about that. Become excited about that. Congratulate someone on their good fortune because then you're planting more seeds for that to happen for you and for your friends and for your family. And this is where Neville Goddard digs really deep right back into this subject. So these periods of absorption, of concentrated attention, are the beginnings of the things you harvest or manifest into your world. So think about this for one second. The periods of absorption, the things you become emotional about, the things that you have a concentrated attention on, are the beginnings of things that you're going to manifest into the future. And it is in these such moments that you are exercising your creative power. You are exercising your creative power with through these periods of absorption of these concentrated attention moments. And they are the beginnings of what you are manifesting of creation and those portions of creation to come into your world. So the only creative power there is, is you. You are the creative power. And at the end of these periods or moments of absorption, you speed from these imaginative states where you have not been physically to where you were physically an instant ago. So in these periods, the imagined state is so real that when you return to the objective world and find that it is not the same as the imagined state, 
It is an actual shock to you. So you have seen something in imagination with such vividness that you now wonder whether the evidence of your senses can now be believed. And what Neville Goddard is talking about right here is shocking time sense or activating the positron in your imagination. When you create a vivid scene in your imagination as real as the three-dimensional world or as the simulation, there is no difference between the two. The, sub the subconscious mind doesn't know the difference. So when you can create an imaginal act as real as your three-dimensional world, bring all of your senses in, and you go into this world in your imagination within you, because that's where the real world is, when you go and make it so real and you come back from it, it's like a shock to you because you feel like you've been somewhere else, even though it was in the present moment. You've, you've made that future dream a present fact, and you've already felt that it was going to be real. And then you shock time sense, and then you're led right to that moment. You shift in, in the multiverse to that world where that's going to happen to you. Just like Neville Goddard says right here, this shock reverses your time sense. By this is meant that instead of your experience resulting from your past, it now becomes the result of being in imagination where you have not yet been physically. In effect, this moves you across a bridge of incidents to the physical realization of your imagined state. So the man or woman who at will can assume whatsoever state they please, they have found the keys to the kingdom of heaven or the keys to manifest whatever they want to come into their life. And these keys are desire, imagination, and a steadily focused attention on the feeling of the wish fulfilled. A steadily focused attention on the feeling of the wish fulfilled. And to such a person, any undesirable objective fact is no longer a reality and the ardent wish no longer a dream. Now let's break down this symbolic nature of this Bible verse, Malachi 3.10. Prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. The windows of heaven may not be opened and the treasure seized by a strong will, but they open of themselves and present themselves their treasures as a free gift. A gift that comes when absorption reaches such a degree that it results in a feeling of complete acceptance. Remember, Neville Goddard said, feeling is the secret, the acceptance of the end, the relief of the end. It may be emotional, but it's the emotion of acceptance. And the passage from your present state to the feeling of your wish fulfilled, it, there is no gap. There is no gap in consciousness or to your wish fulfilled. There is continuity between the so-called real and the unreal. To cross from one state to the other, you simply extend your feelers. Trust your touch and enter fully into the spirit of what you are doing. Enter it knowing there's no gap or separation between you and what you're manifesting. The version of you now, the concept of you now, and the concept that you are trying to attain. The, the, the concept of your wish fulfilled. There is no gap or separation between you and that concept of yourself that you want to be. Just like it was stated here from the Bible symbolically, Zechariah 4, 6, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Assume the spirit, the feeling of the wish fulfilled, and you will have opened the windows to receive the blessing. To assume a state is to get into the spirit of it. Your triumphs or victories will only be a surprise to those who do not know your hidden passage from the state of longing to the assumption of the wish fulfilled. The Lord of hosts will not respond to your wish. The subconscious mind will not respond to your wish until you have assumed the feeling of already being what you want to be. For acceptance is the channel of the subconscious mind's action acceptance is the lord of hosts in action acceptance is the key to unlock the subconscious mind to do whatever you want so essentially make the decision make the decision right now that you're going to control your reality you're not going to react and become emotional about anything that you're manifesting anything that contradicts it anything that comes into your world you are not emotional about it unless you want more of it so make the decision right now to become the best version of yourself to become the concept of self that you want to be make that decision right now you hold the power right now and holding your attention on that as if it's already fulfilled your wishes are already fulfilled and there's nothing that can happen 
in your world that can sway you, that can change you, that can that can force you out of your wish fulfilled. Make that decision right now. You have the power right now to make that decision to not react to negative things, to not react to contradictory things, but to become emotional about things that you want to create in your world. Become excited about things that you want more of in your world and accept those as true in your world. And remember, learning and mastering the law of assumption is like learning or mastering a new language, like learning Japanese or some foreign language. It's a new school of thought that you weren't taught when you were a child. So you're learning this now and you're becoming fluent in this school of thought. So it may take a little bit of time, but the biggest part about this, the most important part is that you don't stop because eventually you will become a master of the law of assumption. You will be an expert at an expert level and level your character up to where this school of thought you are fluent in and you can create anything that you want and it becomes much more simple. And you will find once you master this school of thought that you will be able to manifest things so simply so simply, the life of your dreams will just come to you. You'll just picture one thing in your mind just for a second and you'll get it. A door will open, a phone will ring, a, a, something will happen to where you'll just get it. Just thinking about it just for a second because your attention now, your mind is now trained for the law of assumption. You are assuming your wish fulfilled all the time automatically. It's, it's you're, you're becoming an expert at the law of assumption. So that's the most important part. It's very important to start, but it's more important not to stop. Continue until you master this school of thought. I love you all, and I'll see you in the next one.